Hello Strength Junkies and welcome to another installment of the Strength Junkie vlog. And today I want to talk to you about a concept called negative visualization. Now the Stoics, ancient Stoics, Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, um, Epictetus, one of the concepts of Stoicism is the fact that um, as humans we have this uh, insatiable desire for things, for the next best things. Basically, we're never satisfied. And this um, inability to be satisfied is one of the things that causes us to be unhappy. So what the Stoics taught was that we needed to learn how to appreciate the things and to desire the things that we already have. Um, it's quite easy, and, and we all probably do it, um, you know, just take something very simple like, uh, you know, the, if you just bought a widescreen TV or you got the a new uh, iPhone, a smartphone, it isn't long before you start to desire um, the next upgrade or the next model. So you're no longer happy with what you have. You're already starting to think about the next model. Same with cars, anything that we purchase. I'm thinking of material stuff in that sort of instance. But... And those are just basic examples of the fact that, you know, we are, we're always wanting the next best thing. And you hear that saying, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. So we desire um, the thing that we don't have. But the Stoics was taught that we, in order to increase our happiness, we need to learn how to desire the things that we already have. A couple um, quick examples of, of this, and then we'll talk about this sort of negative visualization. Um, is let's say you got two fathers, right? And they both have a daughter each. Uh, the one father's a high-speed entrepreneur and is always busy, constantly busy. And you know his daughters are young. She's made, let's say the daughters are five years old um, and wants to play. Kids are, like to play when you know they're that age. But the the one entrepreneur, high-speed, you know, always busy you know, puts off playing with his daughter. So his daughter comes to him and wants to play and, he, and he's thinking, well, um, tomorrow's Saturday, um, I've got some time tomorrow, I'll be done with all this work and I can, I can play with it in. So he kind of, you know, shoes her away. Whereas the other dad appreciates the fact that, you know, the daughter might not always be around, which is a fact of life. We're not always guaranteed, you know, that we're going to make it to the end of this tape, let alone to the next day. And um, so he recognizes that and does carves and takes the time out to spin to play with his daughter, to appreciate her now, why he has her here in this moment, because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Um, and again, not to be morbid on this one, but this is what the Stoics were, were taught. So let's just say that in both instances, you know, the fathers did lose their daughter. The one would have spent maximum time with his daughter and had appreciated her while he was here. And the other one will be, you know, the grieving will be extra because he had the opportunity to spend with his daughter, but he was pushing it aside because he was too busy. You get the picture on that. And and just, you know, that's hypothetical, but here's a, a real world example. I remember watching the um, uh, the interviews after the World Trade Center. They were interviewing some of the, the, the people who were left behind, who had lost people in, in, in that tragedy. And one of the things that's always stuck out for me was one lady which was being interviewed and she said the one thing that she regret, regretted was that she didn't kiss her husband goodbye when she was leaving for work that day because she had already put her makeup on and she didn't want to smudge her, her makeup so she just said bye. And so she said her regret is that she will never ever get an opportunity to kiss her husband again. And, and and she didn't have that you know that opportunity. It just stuck with me, you know, for want of smudging the makeup, she didn't kiss her husband goodbye when she was on her way to work and now she will never have that chance to do it again. Uh, the Japanese samurai they had part of their Bushido code and they said this, they said you, know, you should do everything as if it's the last time that you're going to do that thing. So to put that much passion and attention and focus in what you're doing, do it as if it's going to be the last thing that you do. So when you say goodbye to your spouse, say it as if it was going to be the last time that you spent with them or your girlfriend or boyfriend or what have you. But, you know, 
do it with that kind of uh, energy and resolve and passion if, if it was going to be the last time that you got a chance to do that. So this negative visualization is a technique that helps you to appreciate what you have to start to learn how to desire the things that you already have as opposed to wishing about having and wanting to have the next best thing or the next thing um, on there. So what the negative visualization with this technique is just to imagine what's the worst that could happen and what would be what would life be like without that um, that thing that item or that person. So if I didn't have that what what's the worst scenario that could happen in that instance and just spend a few moments to contemplate that as it's not about dwelling on it and you know getting all worried about stuff it's about thinking what your life would be like if you didn't have that person that thing um, uh, in your life classic example of that uh, one of my favorite movies it's a wonderful life um, and you know and George was always wanting to go traveling and see the world and build things and all along while well, he was wishing to be somewhere else um, he was missing what was going on around him and then when he got an opportunity to see what the world would have been like without him he realized that even in those small moments you know the massive impact that he was having um, on people's lives and that they were having on his life so negative visualization the challenge is to what would be the worst that could happen what would my life be like if I didn't have this person or this thing um, in my life and have you know spend some time with that so that it helps you to appreciate what you do have right now in this moment today because tomorrow isn't guaranteed to us it's not promised to us and um, none of us know when that time is that we're not going to be here that you might you know lose your house or your car or your spouse or you know all these things are not guaranteed to us and so appreciate them now and you know I don't know why or how um, just the way the mind is just kind of wired that we have and maybe it's a survival uh, mechanism or instinct so I don't want to be dwelling on you know the negative and this isn't about dwelling on the negative it's about having a brief um, visualization, this negative visualization about that aspect so that you realize that the thing that you have is actually precious. Last example I give you, uh, winter time, um, cars get all dirty and the like in my truck was just filthy. It's cold but I decided I did need to wash it um, and as I was out there in the cold to wash the truck um, I suddenly thought, oh man, this sucks, it's cold out here. But I thought, ah, oh, good moment to practice. And in a small way, practice uh, negative visualization. And then I thought, you know what? There are places in the world um, where they don't even have water to drink, let alone water to wash a truck that they don't have either. So in actuality, it ain't so bad. <laughs> At least I have water and I have a truck and I've got water to wash that truck with in a relatively peaceful environment. So that's what negative visualization and that technique does for you. Just brings you right back to the present, gets you to appreciate what you do have, gets you to desire the things that you already have and keep you present in this moment, which is the only time that we do have is now. Okay, Strength Junkies, that's all I have for you today. Um, go out, do great things, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.